How lovely. We are coming here another day and I can't wait. <laughs> no shopping. <laughs> that was interesting. That was interesting, yes. Yes. So this town here, it's a rural village. And every so often we have crossed, yesterday we passed through one to three different uh, rural districts, each one of them with the, a mayor, a government office, uh -huh. and here, if we were to drive to go into the village, it is Cerro Castillo, and it, they have a boarding school, they have the governor's office, they have a library, a project room, to offer those services to all the people that live in the branches. Now, of course, the population is not too high. Some districts are 400 people, other 1,500 people but that they have a place where they can find a school and they can find a doctor and they can get their dental treatment and they can do tax payments is wonderful. The first people that came here in 1910, 1920, beautiful big houses and all those trees are introduction. Uh, most of them from Europe to ornament the gardens outside the house. Um, not just trees, but flowers. A lot of families brought nothing for the garden. Guanacolam, mm -hmm. Desert, like of rain, the vegetation mm -hmm. that camels like to eat. So the Guanacos come and, and oh, and the camels, the, the original camels of South America, the Macrauquenias. But, so Guanacos come, humans are also populating, and they find a vegetation that they can eat. These guys are both browsers and grazers on very thick plants. And they move south, they cross the Magellan Strait at the narrowest point through ice. And they also populate Tierra del Fuego Big Island. But the ice was not crossed by the puma concolor. So in Tierra del Fuego, the predator were always humans. Here we have pumas. If we see a puma, I I will go back to my house, actually, because after seeing a puma, there's nothing I can say that is remotely interesting compared to the view of a puma in nature. And the area where we're going is a hot spot for puma sighting, by the way. So when Wanakos are coming down the Andes Belt, looking for this sort of pre-Andean vegetation, and they come across a pre-Columbian culture that today are known as the Quechuas. So they it's thought, the they thought the why don't we do something? We, we need this animal. We can get fabric, we can get meat, we can get cheese. Let's try to do something to corral them and use them. So they took the salt gems and used a point between that migration towards the salt and offer the Wanaco the gems and corral them. And this process of 8,000 years of human intervention in the life of the Wanaco domesticated them and as a result we have in the north alpacas they developed these cultures, one of the most famous and most beautiful textile traditions in the world, alpaca moon. Mm. Everyone looks for alpaca in South America. And it's because of them, those cultures. The word Wanako in Quechua means the land of the piles of poop. What they saw is that wherever the Wanakos were browsing or grazing, there would be these piles of poop pellet. What was happening? Why are they pooping all together in the same place? That is related to their social dynamics. Wanakos are a uh, macho alpha male 
society where one dominant Wanaku will have exclusive reproductive rights over a harem of six to 20 females that will only mate with him. And they don't have a sensitive sense of smell. And please, I know right now there's documentaries, Netflix everywhere that talk about how Wanakos can smell the puma. No, no. What can we learn from that male? What can we learn from that male? I'll tell you right now. What are you going to do if you cannot smell the pheromone activity in the, in the female body? Uh, and you can only taste things. Well, what they do and how they form these piles of poop, the males, and if we see a male, this might happen. Alphas show off. Alphas will let you know that they are an alpha, will let us know what they are. If you look at that at a Wanako and it catches your attention, or the, the way they move and their behavior towards us is different. They don't just eat and look at us like, oh, but, no, but they pay attention to us. And they show us their profile or pose for their pictures. It might be one of them. If they urinate in front of you and start pooping, that means, are you busy tomorrow, 8 p.m.? What do you say, right? You can hear Marvin Gaye. <laughs> I've been feeling fine, baby. Okay. So, how the females answer? They go and urinate and poop in the same spot. Why? When I go do something similar to deer, they take particles of urine, small particles, and with the saliva enz enzymes, they swallow and they don't smell pheromones. They taste them. Hasn't it happened to you that sometimes you are in a place, a mall, something, and there's people spraying perfumes, so you try the new Chanel, whatever, and by accident, you swallow particles of a certain perfume or a deodorant, whatever. That thing you feel that now you're not just smelling but tasting, that it's not, it doesn't feel nice, on the Wanaku male has the opposite reaction. They are triggered when they taste the pheromone. Oh, look here. We're ve we have Wanakos very close on the right hand side. So this is not where we're not getting off here because they are a little too far and we want to have them much closer. Mm, he's looking at us. He's looking at us. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> he's not urinating. <laughs> no. We need to wait a little bit. <laughs> he was not impressed. <laughs> oh, and on the left you have a colony of Aplan geese with some southern lab wings mixed. Aplan geese, males are white. This is the only cloephaga, the only geese where the male has a completely different color than the female. The others are pretty much the same, except for size. But here you have a clear sexual dimorphism. Uh, males are, are larger, chest is much larger, white and gray, and the female has two plumage stages. You have a rufous and a, a really beautiful red color uh, sometimes. So what happens? By tasting the pheromone, the male is sexually triggered. And here comes another myth. People have seen these reactions in the female, uh, sorry, in the male, and think that the Wanakos are allergic to a certain plant because of how they start jumping up and moving their their necks. It's not allergies. They were sw they swallowed the pheromone and they are triggered. And they do have a very physical reaction to this moment because they are in love. <laughs> that happens to all of us, right? Yes? No? Yes. <laughs> so. He's triggered, he's in love, you can see 
angels around his head with the wings and the arrows. And now all he can think of is that female that left that email for him. I am a he is going to start sniffing the ground, swallowing and chasing her, and she will move her tail, like they are, the, the male chases her and she moves her tail and looks back, with the, yeah it was me, so he chases her from behind and he sends his long neck to the front legs and bites her legs Softly. teeth are extremely sharp. They are scissors, clippers of nature. Angle, growth, not flat. So they are extremely sharp. So what happens? He bites her front legs, inviting her to lay on the ground. And here comes part of the guanaco anatomy that is just magical. And people that wanted to learn what alphas do, this is the moment. So, uh, between their front legs, Wanakos have a callus, tough as a rock, or hard as a rock, and it's here. And when they mount the female, a luchito, tu podrías venir un poquito? So, I'm going to be the alpha. And Lucho's going to be that female. And you're going to turn around, turn around. All right, so imagine <laughs> that I am the alpha and I have my colors here. I will perform a very strong massage oh, from it's the- so good. <laughs> Like that. Keep on doing it. <laughs> right? And at the same time, the Wanako male will hold air on his cheeks like, this and release it through their parted leaf, lip and they sing. They go <laughs> from one ear to the next. <laughs> like that with the massage, right? So this is like um strangers in the night. Like lonely people. We were strangers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're available for birthdays <laughs> and weddings. <laughs> we'll give you our cards. <laughs> Alright, so why all of this? <laughs> Ovulation in Walaco females is not as spontaneous. It only happens when properly stimulated. So there's no way that a Wanako without experience will be able to perform so that she will be pregnant. Yes? How do they learn all of this? Okay. Let's say that he was successful. Uh, she stays on the ground for about a half hour. She also wants to make sure that she is actually pregnant. Gestation lasts 11 months and they only have one baby, right? So every season we see new offspring. That new offspring is either male or female. And since they stay with the family group, for three years, after three years, Wanako families can have 60 or 80 Wanakos mixed. You always have your harem of females, the one alpha, and all the offspring. The females will start wandering, looking for other groups to join, and an alpha male will be more than happy to welcome young females. They don't have experience. So they wait a little more until they are properly sexually mature for the male to chase and massage and all of this. But what are the males going to do? Can they join? Just join another group? Absolutely no. An alpha will not risk his position at the top of this hierarchy to the presence of young bachelors. So what happens? the young males join bachelor clubs. And where we are going is a valley known for the bachelor community. And the bachelor group has a hierarchy within itself. Wanakos fight, and the fights are awful, but this is where they learn how to become that 
dominant alpha male, and yes, they practice the massage. And that has led to a lot of confusion because through mythology and certain observations, even guides sometimes they tell you, you know, I saw this and that. Uh, can something like that happen between Wanakos? No, they are stimulating one another to understand, to learn what they have to do with their own callus with the female. Does that make sense? Yes. So I have a certain experience after about a few years, maybe two or three years, when they are ready, they survived fights, they survived castration. Uh, Wanakos, when they fight, they seek to castrate the opponent and they can do that. Uh, and what is the the goal is to stop the other Wanako from passing their DNA to a future generation and they remain, uh, they're, they're called inactive, inactive Wanako, there's no more hormonal release. After a while, when they're ready, they start wandering around until they see a group and they will fight the alpha of that group to win over the harem and all the offspring and the fights can last days in a row. The goal, to castrate the opponent. So they chase one another, all teeth are out, they're chasing, chasing, and screaming. You can hear them scream from far away until one of them is able to reach the genitals and cut them off. And they you see them flying in the wind. They fall and then with baskets, once a year we collect them. And that happens usually in, in March. So at the hotel, we might see, no, no. There's someone fainting at the front of them. <laughs> the castration is real, but no, we don't find anything. And, and the sack is tiny, very, very small. So castration can happen quickly if that one alcohol had experience and they really know how to to perform the, the cut. Um, they live 14 years, but usually the males are going to live less due to the const constant fighting. Now, what will happen with the alpha that lost the fight? Limping puts you out of the uniformity of a herd. Limping will attract predation. Not that you're weak, but you're walking differently. And that walking differently makes you gain. So usually a Wanaku deeply or badly wounded limping will be Puma's dinner in a 300 pound camel. The largest camel in South America is the perfect three day meal for a Puma, especially if she has cubs. So that's your, that's the Wanaku and the four camels. Wanakus became alpacas in the north. Wanakos are larger by about 15 or 20 centimeters, so it's not too much. They are bigger, but they have less fleece. Alpacas have a much larger fleece due to domestication, and the back legs are also shorter in the alpaca. There you have your difference of about uh, 20 centimeters. And then you have vicuñas, and the domesticated vicuña is llama. It's a tiny, um, domesticated animal compared to the alpacas. You have alpacas and llamas, but that is domesticated by law. They are protected by law, but in Tierra del Fuego, since there is no predator for them, we can hunt them. And once a year, the Chilean state opens a hunting quote, but you have to apply to get the permits, you get your papers, and you can hunt one, six, or the number they give you according to the area where there is overpopulation, not in all the islands, but they, give, they tell you where you can go and hunt. Usually for uh, an area where you have maybe 15,000 Wanakos, they will open a 500, 500 Wanakos that you can take. They're not on the supermarkets, but we do have certain products available made of Wanako, like jerky, ham, sausages, things like that. Do you have any questions? What's the... Uh, we have alpa guanacos alpacas, vicuñas, and llamas. Yes. Oh, Rias!
they love these grasses. This is forage. Look at them. Now, uh, when the summer is over, they are usually not that territorial and more than one family can share the same space. But then from September on, uh, October, November, December, January, February, they become very, very territorial, but it's because they are mating. Do they belong to someone or are they just wild? They are completely wild. Wild. Yeah. And this high fences that run this rancher has been lifting the fence to stop one echoes from jumping over to his forage. But they can still tilt the fences over. <laughs> they can break them down. They're strong, big enough. This is a, a mixed, a, a group, a normal group of females, offspring. Some of them might be two or three months pregnant already. strong winds um, so they were made by those strong winds we'll see where they come from partial view almost full view of the towers Almirante Nieto that we saw earlier from the road we can see the horns so this is perfect for our first hike we want to be there as soon as possible not to lose this amazing amazing view Our goal today is to uh, go for the hikes, right? But in a day like today, we don't know if we will see this same thing tomorrow or later during the day. So let's go take a picture and then come back. What are we looking at again? The names? 
I think Sarmiento, uh, not the massif of a of plain, the, the towers. Oh, uh, Mirante okay. Nieto and the horns. Uh, oh my gosh. Windy and cold. There's a glacier in between. The idea, just like Cota said, we don't chase them to take a pictures because we we are intruding their lands, their place, right? them but us. Fermented foods add many acids and things that are good for our bodies mm -hmm. and animals know that too so when they bury bones or cover uh, meat with grass they allow fermentation and then they return and feed from the fermented meat. And then when uh, they have eaten everything they need the birds, foxes, uh, will do all the rest of the work and they will leave clean bones. Bones that are not buried, that are outside in nature, are washed away from their collagen content. Like the bones here, I can see from here, uh, some bones here and there on the grass, scattered in the wind. Those, mm. oh, yeah. we have okay. some bugs, some flies, that can go and start feeding from them but usually no more animal feeding or birds because there is zero collagen content in them. Mm. For collagen to remain, we need an animal that will bury the bone. And our pumas can use these grasses to cover, ferment, and then return, but not there's not enough to protect collagen mm. content. As a group. As a group. How long do we have? It should be about an hour and a half. 300 yards behind or half a mile behind because it's not a good idea. We have to be together. For the steep part that Luis mentioned, we can walk on the grass, we can do that outside the trail, or if you want to, you can go sideways. Oh, there's a Wanaco right in front of here in the road. I'm gonna see it so you can see it. <laughs> it's a female. 
<laughs> Interesting, eh? Uh, do you have any doubts? Any questions? So, this is perfect because we oh told goodness. them we would be here a quarter to 11. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you that. I'm sorry. Sí, es oh, no puedes dejar a la izquierda. Don't stand up just yet. We're going to park a little better and then we get off and our trailhead is here to your left you will see a small wooden sign and some orange sticks <laughs> so the trail is is well marked Marca, Marca. maybe that's the name of the trail it's a beautiful day it's not even windy Kota is wearing a short sleeved uh, t shirt. <laughs> we are all overdressed, I think. <laughs> Look, they are just gonna walk around uh, right by the guanacos. Guanaco poop. <laughs> Look, wild daisies. <laughs> a running guanaco. Oh, he left. That's what I was looking for before. Wow. Look at them. Oh my God. Awesome. just looking at me <laughs> yes <laughs> are you as curious about me as I am about you hi wow they're still coming Oh boy, you are comfortable with me. Wow. Oh. He's not that far. Oh, I wonder what that means. He's probably just scratching. Very elegant. That's probably the alpha male looking at me, protecting the harem. Oh my god, look how many. And this is the fence but they jump right over it, of course.
Look at this landscape. Oh, more coming up there. Wow, big herd. Might be more than one. So if it's one herd, it's the alpha male. All the females in the harem and up to three generations, three years worth of babies that they are bringing up. Wow. Oh my goodness. I wonder what it triggers them. Well. <laughs> this, this was a fence and they have uh, pushed it over. I think this used to be upright. <laughs> They find the weak point in any fence and they jump over it. They're going all the way down to the valley. Guanacos know not to overgraze in one area. They have a, an innate sense to not destroy an area. So they eat a little and they move on. Who is doing that? Look at the babies. I wonder if they, they will change their crossing point once I get closer to it. What happened? 
I guess they're gonna know if there is a puma in the area much faster than I will. He's coming over. <laughs> interesting grasses cute little baby oh my god he's nursing That's a long time. Tiengo hambre. <laughs> Lunch time. Come on, guy. <laughs> wow. Finally. Oh, more. <laughs> He's going for more. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Baby fool. I wonder if this is the one that she was talking about, that every leaf it is a thorn. Or maybe this, I don't know. One of these. They're all moving down the hill. Oh my god, I missed that. They were fighting. Wow, kind of fierce. Very short though, like a second. They like to roll. <laughs> That's butts. It's beautiful here. I'm back on the trail because I'm gonna have to go back soon. I think this is the one that she was saying that every leaf is a thorn. And it's like a dome. <laughs> well protected. <laughs> Look at them. One of them is whining like a baby. I don't know if you can hear it. Such a special experience. Wild Wanacos. And the peace and quiet of the park.
There were so many and they all disappeared. Isn't that something? Kind of. <laughs> there are a few trailers. Lonesome guy. Just you and I. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Well, there are a few more. <laughs> they came to say goodbye. Wow. We were blessed today. I don't know if they are here every day, but this was such a blessing and such a beautiful day without any wind clear blue skies well not clear beautiful white clouds <laughs> beautiful grasses very interesting and that's our coach my chariot waiting oh my god I'm so happy to be here this was Wonderful, so pleasant. My God, look at this view. We're going to pick up the rest of the group. A rato vamos a llegar a una y vamos a ver el. Vamos a ver así. That's the group. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> they look so tiny, like little ants. <laughs> mm -hmm. ah, hello. Oh, oh, come on. Tell the truth. How many did you see? How many pumas? <laughs> Zero pumas. Oh, five or six. Five or six at least. <laughs> the, le the rest are uh, puma lunch. <laughs> Look at the condors flying overhead. Laguna is lake and lag is short for Laguna. So I guess uh, there are lakes. Felicitaciones, congratulations to all them. I hope you understand or you can see why I am in love with this place. I wish my mother have given birth to myself here, here in the middle of the country, so next to a guanaco, pile of poop, that would be my place in the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, 